Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, I'm going to talk about the application of Gauss-Jordan method in finding the inverse of a matrix where this matrix is uh, larger than a 2 by 2 matrix. So here is a bit of explanation. If A is a square matrix, and then let's say you perform a sequence of elementary row operations. And these uh, operations are able to reduce your matrix to an identity matrix. Therefore, by taking the same, the same sequence of elementary row operations, so you apply the process in the same order, then that process will be able to turn uh, identity matrix into what we are looking for, which is uh, the inverse of matrix A. And as always, we're going to jump straight into a practical example. And here is matrix A. You are asked to find the inverse of this matrix using the Gauss-Jordan method. So, uh, right. Um, well, this is the same example as in the previous video, whereby in the previous video, I have shown how this question can be um, solved using the adjoint uh, aggregate method. So in this video, we are looking at the same example, but here uh, we'll be applying the Gauss-Jordan method. Okay, so to simplify the look of the process, what we can do is we can introduce this um, notation here side by side this is matrix a and next to it is identity matrix which can be written as um well matrix a is one two negative one and then here we have two two four and one three negative three so right next to it is an identity matrix. And we're going to do the process of transforming this matrix into identity. And the same process will transform this identity matrix into um, inverse matrix. Alright, uh, so we're going to start off by uh, making sure this part here is 0, this is 1, this is okay. So this is 0, this must be 0 as well. So here is the process of transforming the second row plus negative 2, the row 1. And the result is going to look like this. 1, 2, negative 1 is maintained. And so this uh, counterpart of identity matrix is also maintained. But on the second row, so 2 plus negative 2 times 1 is 0. 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. And then 4 plus 2 is 6. And on this one, 0 plus negative 2, this is negative 2, 1 plus negative 2, negative 2 times 0 is 1, 0 plus this one is going to be 0. So second row is changed accordingly. And then here is 1, 3, negative 3, 0, 0, 1. Next is, um, I want to make sure that this one is also 0, therefore um, R3 plus negative 1, R1. Okay. So first row remains uh, unchanged. And then 0, second row also remains unchanged. And the third row becomes, so 1, plus negative 1 is 0, 3 plus negative 2 is 1, negative 3 plus 1 is 
negative 2 and here 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1 0 plus 0 is 0 1 plus 0 is 1 right next what I can do is uh, I want to turn this into uh, 1 so actually what I can do is I can switch the position of row third with row second so that one becomes at this position okay so here what I have to do is okay I'm just going to continue this side switch the row r3 with r2 and so the result that we get is as such mm. so switching now 0 1 negative 2 put it as a second row negative 1 0 1 0 negative 2 6 negative 2 1 0 now um, what I would like to do next is to ensure this part here becomes 0 so um, what I will do is I will introduce this operation R3 plus 2 R2 and by doing that uh, I will have okay this one uh, remains as it is and for the second row also the values remain the same For the third row, we will have 0 plus 0 is 0, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, 6 minus 4 is 2, negative 2, mm, negative 2, negative 2, negative 4, 1 plus 0 is 1, 0, this one becomes 2. Okay, so what I should do next is I'm going to make sure this part is 1. See uh, what I'm doing on this matrix here. This is matrix A, remember? So my aim is to reduce this matrix into an identity matrix. But in doing so, I'm also at the same time transforming the identity matrix into slowly uh, into getting the answer uh, of an inverse matrix Yeah. Right now, what I can do is I can make sure this becomes value of 1. And how can I do that? Well, I can introduce this process of multiplying the third row with 1 over 2. And the result that I will get is, oh well, 1, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, maintain. Okay, and then um, we have this result, 0, 1, zero, one negative 2, negative 1, um, 0, 1. And then at the bottom here, we will uh, have this value will be, become 1. This will become um, negative 2, 1 over 2, and 1. Okay. So 1 over 2 with row 3, you will get the new values for the third row. And uh, this is the new values. So what we can do next is I can turn this into 0. This part has to be 0. Well... What I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce this operation plus negative 2 R2. So the first row remains unchanged. And for the second row here, 0 plus negative 2 times. Um, sorry. Sorry, this process requires the changes in the first row. I'm sorry. Okay, hang on. So what we have is 1 plus negative 2 times 0 
becomes 1. 2 plus negative 2 times 1 is 0. Negative 1. Mm, negative 1 plus 4 is going to be equal to 3. This one, 1 um, plus 2 is equal to 3. 0 plus 0, this is 0. 0 plus negative 2, so this is negative 2. Second row remains unchanged. Third row also remains unchanged. Right, uh, next what I can do is I need to change all these uh, top parts here to become 0. So maybe we can start with changing the first row. Well, what I can do is... Um, I can change that to be R1 plus um, negative 3 R3. So um, 1, 1 plus negative 3 times 0 is 1. 0 plus negative 3 times 0 is 0. 3 plus negative 3 is 0 so the first part looks uh, looks good now so we have 1 0 0 next uh, 3 plus 6 is 9 so this one is 0 um, negative 3 over 2 so this is negative 3 over 2 finally negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5 so that is uh, the first row. Second row remains unchanged. Third row also remains unchanged. Now uh, we are left with this operation, the last operation, which should turn the value here into zero. So what I can do now is um, I can consider R2 plus 2 R3 and so the results become well for the first row it remains the same okay that's your first row next for the second row um, 0 plus 2 times 0 is 0, 1 plus 2 times 0 is 1, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 1 uh, minus 4, this is negative 3. Is it correct? So here is negative 1, negative 1, negative 4, sorry, negative 5. This is negative 5. And then uh, 0 with this, 2 over 2 is 1. So this is 1. And um, 1 plus 2, this is equal to 3. The last row is unchanged. And that will be as such. So you can see that by doing all this elementary process, we have turned, so what we did is we have turned this matrix into an identity matrix. Oh, sorry, not that one. Uh, we have turned that into the final look, which is identity matrix. So A has already been turned into an identity matrix by using by applying all this process here. So that's what happened. We have a sequence of elementary row operations that turn A into an identity matrix. And if you follow the same sequence, so the same sequence in this order, and uh, you turn the identity matrix into uh, this result here, and this result is the result of uh, inverse matrix of A. So that's the 
essence of Gauss Jordan method and I think personally I think that this method is much easier than the adjugate method or adjoint method which you have seen in the previous video uh, but it's up to you to draw your own conclusion whatever that you feel more comfortable with uh, you can um, stick to that and uh, hopefully this video has been helpful and thank you very much for watching this i'll see you in the next video